Hey guys, James here. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to hang a heavy picture or mirror onto a wall. Now, what I'm going onto is a brick wall, so there'll be a different fixing method for that than if you're going onto a plasterboard wall. So what you see in the video is me going about the installation, and then I'll come back and I'll talk about some of the different various fittings and fixtures that you can actually use, such as uh, hollow wall anchors, uh, wall mates, uh, spring toggles, spaghettis, and different types of fixings that we're gonna need for the various type of, uh, I guess, um, arrangement you're going into. All right, so stay tuned, and I'll show you how to hang this picture, and then I'll come back and talk about some of the fixings. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my mirror here that I'm gonna be hanging on the wall. The first thing you wanna do is work out where your fixings are. I measure down from the top. So I'm a distance to the top of the hook here, which is 310. And then I'd also like to check is the distance in from the edge. So here I've got 83 millimeters. And again, I'll check the same on the other side. So that gives me a starting point measuring from the edge across. Then all I need to do is center up this frame on, on the wall where I know it needs to go. And I can measure across my 83 and down my 310. Okay, so now, once we know the position of where the hooks are, then you just want to measure the overall width of the frame. So I've got 900, and now I measure the width of this wall, center it up, and then I can come back to determine where these fixing points are. Then I'll put some tape on the walls, we'll mark those points, drill them out, put our plugs in, and we can hang it up. Okay, so we're gonna center this up. 1500. I like to use painter's tape to mark things out or to scribble on or to write on. Take my 1500, less my 900, and then I'll give me the distance. Divide that by two, and it'll give me the distance of how far to come in for each side of the mirror. So we've got 600 left, divided by three, no, divided by two equals 300 in from each side. And then from that 300, I can go my 83 millimeters to where my hook is, and then I can measure the distance across to the next hook. What I also do is I've measured how much I want for clearance to the bottom of the mirror, which is gonna be 100 millimeters. And then from there, the distance up to the bottom of the hook. So that will determine the height of it here. You really just wanna be working out where you need an edge, where the bottom of the frame is gonna be, or where the top of the frame is gonna be. So it's really just a measurements game or a numbers game at first, just to get the positioning right. Once you know where that is, then we get our levels, we get our heights, and drill away. Okay, so what I had written down on my paper was basically 890 up from the base of the, the frame up to where the hook starts. Because I want 100 millimeters clearance at the bottom there, I just basically add that 100 millimeters. So I'm gonna come up 990, that'll be the top of my hook with the 100 mil clearance. I'm gonna come in my 300 to the edge of the frame plus my 83 mil. Put a bit of tape there and that'll be my first determining point. So 990, now I come in my 300 plus my 83. So 383. Now I can mark that out on the paper. My 990. Okay, now I've got something to work off to come across to my next mark. Now I've got 735 in between my two hooks and I can also sanity check that off the edge, just making sure that it's the same distance as what we have with this one. There. And then now we just need to determine the height up. If your mantle or if your floor's level, you can measure up off that. If not, you can take your level, which I'd probably suggest doing. Now I'll go with my 735. Now like I said, as a sanity check, if I measure across now, it should really be my 300 to the edge of the frame plus my 83. And there we go, 383. Okay. So next we're ready to drill. Now I'm gonna use green plugs that'll go into the wall after we drill it to screw into. For that, I use a six mil bit on a hammer drill. Now depending on how heavy your mirror or painting or anything is, you may wanna bump that up to a, a bigger fixing. You can use uh, a blue plug or blue spaghetti. That's eight mil, so you need an eight mil hammer bit. And then normally for something like that, if I'm using the blue spaghetti, I'll use a bigger heavy duty, like a 14 gauge screw into the wall, and that'll make it nice and solid. Again, you can get the, um, the green in spaghetti as well. If you want to go on a long way, it could be handy. You push that in and cut it off. It can be a little bit trickier to work with, just because of bends. 
and I'd probably stay away, if you're gonna be using spaghetti, I'd stay away from the orange, the stuff that's got the split in it, because again, that makes it really hard to feed into, and if you haven't used the orange spaghetti before, it's probably not the best for beginners, so probably the easiest is a, a preformed plug. And what you'll see, I'll put a little suction cap up here so no dust falls down the wall. If you've got someone handy with a vacuum, they can actually hold a vacuum underneath just so that the red dust doesn't drop down and go everywhere around the house. Just a little tip. Um, but now the next thing is to basically put these plugs in. Let's pull these off, pop our plugs in, pop a couple of screws in, and hang a mirror. Try and knock it back as flush as far as possible. If it doesn't quite go flush, get your Stanley knife and just chop the end of it off. The next coming out screws, I recommend these pan head screws. You'll see at the top there, they've got a flat base rather than a countersunk base. All right, now ready to hang. It can be a bit tricky, I'd suggest if there's two people, get one each side. But if you have to do it by yourself, it just takes a little bit more mucking around, a little bit more effort. I like to flip my hooks down. So you see there, you can either have them up, or if you hang them down a bit, then you can latch over the, the screws at the top and fold it down. All right, so there you go guys. That's how you hang one heavy mirror frame. Now, as promised, I'll go through some of the other various toggles and fixings that we might use if you're on, say, a hollow plasterboard wall. Fixings that you can use for plasterboard walls. This is what we call a spring toggle. Now, spring toggle's not too bad. What you do is you push those wings back, drill a hole, pop it through, and then it pops through the other side of the plasterboard. Those wings pop out, and then you pull it back, and you can tighten it up. The only downside with these is you tend to have to um, unscrew this all the way out, put it through the item that you're fixing through, whether it be a, uh, a board or something like that, then screw the toggle back onto it, and then whatever you're hanging onto, slide that with the screw into the hole and then let it pop. Plus it can be a little bit fiddly, a little bit tricky. My go-to hollow wall anchor are these ones we call wall mates. They have them in plastic, or they have them in metal. Now all you do for that is just drill through, say about a, an eight millimeter hole. It's got a Phillips head bit on the end of it. You put your screw driver into the end of that, and then you just twist it into the wall up until it gets to this end, and then that generally holds it. They hold about 10 kilos each, so two of those will hold a mirror up to about 20 kilos. Um, you can potentially put more of those into the wall if you need to take more weight, like if you've got a string along the back of your picture frame, you could potentially put in, say, four along the length of the string, put some screws on it, and then it should really take up to 40 kilos. You've got these other ones, which are called uh, hollow wall anchors. Now these have a funny little washer and a head on them, but you also need a special tool for that one, which is this thing. And you slide these over the top, and then they get crimped into the wall. And when they get crimped, these little ends squash up, and it squashes it, similar to what the spring toggle does, but it squashes it into place. And then you can use those. So they, they come in various lengths and sizes, again, depending on how thick your plasterboard is. These little ones are for, say, five mil villa board. These bigger ones are for, say, you know, 13 mil plasterboard or drywall. And lastly, you've got your ram toggle, which is similar to the spring toggle. Basically, you just drill your hole, pop that through, and then as it gets through the other side of the plasterboard, the wings tend to pop up like that. You put your screw through, and as your screw goes through and picks up the other side, it starts pulling it over and it tightens it towards the back of the wall. If you do have something really heavy, you probably want to go more for like a 14 gauge batten screw. But with that, you want to use a thicker um, plug material. So the blue is eight mil thick, so you want to use an eight mil thick tungsten tip blade. All right, and that's it. Like I said, just use various size pan head screws, depending on what thickness you want to go through. And that's about it. Hammer drill, cordless drill, hammers, screwdrivers, and you're laughing.
All right, so there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Like or subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Cheers. Um.